steam powered machine shop. Uh, we got the base finished for the Morris engine and I moved it over here and I've got it set on it. I haven't drilled and tapped the holes for it yet, but uh, that's what it looks like. Uh, got to leave room on the right side for the governor pulley and I've got to rework the piping on top here so that the governor sits over here where it needs to be in order to build up to it. But uh, that's what it's going to look like. Uh, we got some other things today that you might be interested in. Thanks a lot for supporting the channel and for liking and uh, subscribing. And uh, we're glad you're along for the trip. Well, the Morris engine had no base because I believe it, the engine frame was bolted directly to the equipment that it was on. Uh, the engines that Morris made that were built to be just stationary engines had a cast iron, tapered cast iron base. Uh, and so I'm trying to replicate something similar to that out of 3 8 mild steel plate. And I'm, I'm welding it up. There you get the idea. It's all tacked together so that it won't distort so much when it's welded. It's 3 8 plate and this is 3 quarter inch on the front for the bolt mounts. really required here is cutting the pieces out and fitting them together, squaring them up, packing it together, and the way I do it is to skip around so that it doesn't warp so much. Whenever you weld something it's going to warp. There's nothing you can do about it. So everything you do you try to minimize that and uh, by tacking it all together first uh, it won't work so bad, but I keep watching it and don't weld a whole lot in one place at a time. Kind of get a little creative with the joint design and leave it high in the middle so that I can round it off and make it look a little like a casting of rounded corners. Putting on the second pass here over the top. This is the first pass. This is the final pass. I leave the little rounded here to make a kind of a rounded edge when I get it ground down. Now it's back on the welding table again. And I've got it clamped down really tight on the flanges here try and keep them from warping and I'm going to try to get away with just one pass in here to minimize the warpage. Uh, I had a straight edge and it did just about what I thought it would do. It's, it's a little gap there and a little gap there. On the ends it's not bad each way. So I think, I think it's good.
the uh, shaper, I'm going to come across the top here. The plane is flat. Uh, got to bolt it down, clamp down with an extra stop here in the front. And it's going to be pretty light cut anyway. So, uh, first thing to do is set up the stroke.
Okay, this is about the third time across and I got the thing leveled up pretty good by shimming it. I'm gonna go one more pass across with my beat up tool. Cause it's just gonna get beat up on these welds anyway. And then I'll put a good tool in it. And it gets down close. it over, straightening up the bottom. finished product. Top's plain, straight with the bottom. Take out the warpage distortion. Uh, the wells are rounded off here. The corners are rounded off. Make it look a little like a casting. And uh, I'll set the engine on here and mark the holes. Drill and tap them. 5 eighths coarse. I may uh, put a lock nut on the bottom but I don't think it'll be necessary. Uh, so I mean, it turned out pretty good. This is an interesting piece I wanted to show you. Uh, it's a lathe dog that's completely blacksmith made. Uh, a friend of mine gave this to me the other day. And uh, if, for those of you who might not know what a lathe dog is, this is a store-bought one and you clamp it on your on a piece of round stock that has a center hole in it and then this goes in the lathe uh, up against a uh, dead center 
in the uh, in the spindle instead of a chuck and you have either a dog driver or a faceplate with a slot in it that would drive it and then you do what you need to do to the piece and then undo your dog and flip it around put the other center hole in there and finish it up and that way you're turning it between centers and hopefully your work will line up in the middle it's kind of a thing but the way this thing is made you evidently Started out with a piece of bar stock like this, wrought iron, and split it, heated it up red hot, split it with a chisel like this, about like that, and then opened it up, made it round, cut it off, put this end in a lathe, and machined this round, and at that time probably drilled and tapped the hole for this, then cut it off hammered this out flat and turned the leg on it. I'd like to try to make one of them sometime. I was down at the local blacksmith guild this afternoon so I decided to try it. And I split this piece of, I think it's probably three-quarter inch and I'm gonna cut it off here and put it in a lathe and turn this slightly tapered here like this one is and drill and tap a hole and then at some other time I'm gonna uh, bend the, uh, forge this sort of flat and bend the tail on it here Okay, I got it in the lathe and uh, just kind of roughly indicated it in so that it's somewhere near straight here on the end. And this is Saturday afternoon and I'm not fired up in the shop here so I'm on electric power on this little lathe. Off somewhere near right. Okay, then I'm gonna center drill it. Seems like a 3 8 screw would be about right for this size. I've got this long square headed set screw that I can cut off whatever length I want. So that would require a 5 16 tap drill. tap
Uh, rather than fire up my forge for this little guy, I'm going to do it with a settling forge.
Well, that was a bit of a struggle, but there it is. Well, that's one of those just for the heck of it deals. Kind of wanted to see if I could do it. Maybe we'll use it sometime. <laughs>